Hello everyone. In this episode, we're going to do something a little different uh, from the usual. Uh, we're going to look at my VS Code setup. So there will be no coding, no uh, new concepts, nothing like that. We'll just go through the extensions that I use because I get this question a lot. Like on almost every video that I post, someone is asking about uh, where are you getting this from or uh, what is that extension? So I decided to finally make a video about it. Uh, I'm going to share my favorite extensions with you. Uh, hopefully you can use them at work uh, in your daily coding adventure and, and benefit from this. So let's get to it. So the extension that I get the most questions about, uh, except for the, the color scheme that I use, uh, which is just one dark pro with a couple tweaks for the colors. I'm not going to talk about this one in uh, this video, but I'm going to talk about others. So the extension that gets the most questions like, more than any others is this one. Uh, like, why am I seeing the error message in line with the code? So this is a really good extension. I really like it and I always install it as one of the first ones. It causes the errors to show up in line with the code. Uh, I think by default you just get this quickly underline and you also see the errors in the problems tab. Uh, this also works for like warnings. If I have a private val, uh, this is a warning. Uh, because I have it in my build SBT, warn unused locals. Uh, if it's not used, I get warning and this shows up as warning in line. If I had anything that's on info level, uh, which I think I can cause with a library that I have enabled globally, uh, it shows up in blue. Uh, right now it's also a warning, but um, well, let's make it a public file. Now it's a, an info level message and we can see it here in blue as well. Uh, so the extension is error lens. Uh, that's this one. Let's get to the next extension. So we've made a couple changes in our in our file, and uh, maybe we would like to revert to a previous version. So there's the extension uh, local history, and I can see all the changes that I made. Well, I guess it it only adds a new version when I save the file. I have autosave on when I when I switch uh, focus. You can also turn it on uh, so it saves files periodically. I do recommend doing it on, on focus changes because it just saves so much effort uh, and unnecessary like uh, missing changes if something crashes or if you just uh, close the editor uh, when you don't mean to. So you can see the previous versions, you can like, it actually compares them to the, to the current one. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, this is built in into IntelliJ IDEA of course, but well, I guess it was possible to add it as an extension here. And all these versions, uh, they are kept in a local file in a, in a directory called uh, dot .history. So we get like a, a copy of the tree of files with all the versions in the right directories. Uh, there isn't anything else to it. I guess you can also go to a file and look up uh, local history here. You can compare like current version, all. There's a couple of options, but the most important thing is that you, you can actually see what the file looked like at a given point in time. So that's pretty cool. The next extension is also not very language specific. It's uh, go to next previous member. So if I had, for example, uh, a function here, uh, I can like switch between these two uh, using a, a keyboard shortcut. I don't think it's enabled by default, so uh, you might have to like bind a specific uh, key sequence uh, to, to it. I would suggest something like control up and down. It works pretty well for me. And I think that's also how it's configured by default in IntelliJ IDEA. Another built-in feature that's just missing from VS Code by default, uh, but it's a small extension. You can also add this one. Uh, so I use it a lot when you have a file with like, uh, let's say a class, let's go to IO app. Uh, we can also jump around here. Uh, I guess it doesn't just go through members. It also uh, sometimes sees th some things like here, try and case. Um, I'm not sure where this is getting the information from. Uh, might be something with blocks, but uh, anyway, it's better to have too many places where it goes through uh, than like not enough. Uh, so it just speeds up navigation around the file. Also, if you didn't know it, in VS Code, you can uh, open this window. Uh, it's on Mac by default. This is Command Shift O, 
and you can uh, search by symbol. So like if you want to go to runtime, it will show you runtime or all the symbols starting with run uh, or containing run. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, also, like I use these interchangeably when I navigate around the file. Next, we have a pretty new uh, extension. It's GitHub Copilot from, from GitHub. Uh, I think it's still in beta, so you might have to, at the time you're watching this, uh, you might still have to register for the beta. Uh, so what it does is it basically completes your code uh, using AI. Uh, so let's say I wanted to have a function that uh, sums a list of ints. And basically, yeah, it's not very accurate always, but it, it does give you some things. This actually compiles. This is actually correct code. But what, what if I didn't want an IO here, if I wanted just an int? Uh, so it will give you list sum or list fold. Um, it will also complete that. Uh, so it's pretty decent. Sometimes it actually helps me in some mundane daily work, like generating pattern match cases or a list of examples for a test, something like that. Uh, I used to use tab nine, but it wasn't free. After some time, like two weeks, you have to start paying for it and I didn't want to. So uh, these days, GitHub Copilot is doing uh, a decent job at the same thing. And I like it quite a lot. It's not perfect. Like it doesn't always like do everything perfectly. Uh, but most of the time when something is really repetitive and easy to predict what goes next, it, it actually knows what to do. So, so that's a, a pretty decent extension. Okay, this one I really like, and I think it's going to be really, really nice to, to show this. Uh, this is a YAML file, and <laughs> if you work with YAML a lot in your daily job, you will notice that it's very easy to mess up where you are, like how much nesting you have in a specific line. So this is indent rainbow, and it gives you colors for every level of the indent so that it's easier for you to see like where you are, how deep in the YAML uh, rabbit hole you are. So uh, this is it. Uh, that's that's the plugin, basically. Uh, there's a similar one for parentheses. I guess you would use them, use that extension for something like Lisp languages uh, or just any kind of languages that are deeply nested with, with braces, brackets, and parents. Uh, so check these out. I only have this one because I'm not afraid of, of parents. But, you know, pick your poison. Next is the multiple clipboards one. So I, this might, again, be a native feature in IntelliJ IDEA. I don't remember. The answer is yes, it is a default feature. But basically, I can like copy around a couple of things. And then I can do multi-clip. Uh, there is multi-clip list buffer. And yeah, I can, I can pick uh, one of the snippets that I copied before. And I can paste it. Uh, there's also a shortcut for this. There is, uh, you might have to... Uh, to set it up yourself, and it works across files. Like you can copy things and use use the co the text you copied from a different file uh, in here. So that's uh, another decent extension uh, worth having, especially if you copy code around a lot, uh, which I think happens for all of us. Um, just check it out. Another fun extension uh, is Spotify. So I have a Spotify VS Code extension. Uh, I think there is a panel for it. Uh, yeah, so you can see like my playlists, uh, you can see the tracks in the current playlists. Um, I'm not going to get into these, but just trust me, uh, you can play around with it. Uh, you can you can just use it to play songs, to switch songs to the next previous one. I, I think you can also mute or yeah, there, you don't have any more control over the volume. Actually you do, you can do volume up um, with a shortcut. Uh, and so on. Actually, some of these are bound to shortcuts by default, which is pretty nice unless you have a lot of shortcuts already. Uh, you can also actually look up the lyrics uh, for a song. Sometimes it, it doesn't work, uh, but let's, let's use a different song and, and try that now. And it works. So, so yeah, so that's pretty nice. Th this feature doesn't exist in the uh, native application. And yeah, you need the native application to be running on the same machine because that's how it communicates with it. It doesn't use the API. Uh, so yeah, that's a fun extension. If you use Spotify a lot, uh, get it. Uh, you won't regret it. Next, we have Metals, which is the, the extension that I use for uh, Scala. This is the main extension for Scala for VS Code right now. Uh, I think the only one actively developed. Uh, so basically what it does is give you uh, 
code analysis, like of course syntax highlighting, but this is covered by the Scala extension, which is a dependency of metals. So this does um, like syntax highlighting, of course, uh, but metals gives you navigation even in SBT files and in your, your, your code. It gives the navigation to the independencies and independencies. Uh, you also have completions, so you can uh, see which uh, methods are available on a symbol. Uh, you can navigate between symbols defined in your workspace. You can create new classes using it. Uh, you can apply some refactorings like renaming. For example, I could tell this is a demo and even the file name is going to change. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's the most advanced extension for Scala for VS Code. Um, or the most precise one because it integrates with the like the default tools like with the uh, the presentation compiler and with the PSP tooling and you can also run uh, like metals will actually generate bloop files for you so you can run um, the the program from bloop already without having to regenerate that uh, it supports a variety of of build tools like SBT like mill and all the other tools that you're probably using uh, will also be covered by this. So yeah, this is Metals. And uh, nowadays I'm using more of VS Code than IntelliJ IDEA. Actually, I've been using it for about two years now. And I only go back to IntelliJ in some like dire situations when I have like a huge refactor to make or uh, when I want to debug my code because the debugging support in Metals is not uh, that advanced yet. It's getting there slowly, but it's not there uh, still. This has been my daily driver for about two years now, and I would totally recommend it to you, especially if you are not uh, a complete beginner to Scala. So yeah, this is it. And the final extension is Scaladex Search. Uh, this is made by my colleague, Oliver. Uh, you can look, for example, for cats, just like in the example here, and uh, it will suggest which which modules from a, from a library you can select and which version you can use. This will get copied to your, uh, your, your clipboard. You can paste it in here. So this is it. These are my favorite extensions. Uh, if you liked some of them, uh, just feel free to get them. They're free, they're online. Um, and maybe if I have some more uh, that, I, that I start using in the future, I will also share them uh in a video like this one so if you enjoyed this if you want to see more of this kind of content on this channel uh, leave a like subscribe and do whatever you want in the comments and i'll see you in the next episode